Leon, the famously flamboyant billionaire alien known for his extravagant displays of wealth and notorious disdain for paying taxes, had set his sights on Asia. Known throughout the galaxy for his audacity and opulence, Leon decided he wanted to buy Japan, China, and Australia in one fell swoop. Wait, did the narrator just say I'm a billionaire? Do you think I'm broke? Billionaires are just middle-class millionaires. There are no words for how much money I have. Here, take this diamond and go find something else to do for a living and never talk to me again. Known throughout the galaxy for his audacity and opulence, Leon decided he wanted to buy Japan, China and Australia in one fell swoop. Leon's journey began in Tokyo with his usual grand entrance, a fleet of limousines and a helicopter. The media and curious onlookers flocked to see him, eager to witness his latest spectacle. During a lavish banquet held in his honor, Leon casually mentioned his latest plan. I'm thinking of buying Japan, China and Australia. They seem like quaint little places, don't they? Mr. Leon, do you really think you can buy entire countries? That seems... Do you think I can't buy them? I can buy anything I set my mind to. How much do you think these places are worth? Here, take this platinum bar and never question my financial capabilities again. As they continued their tour of Tokyo, Leon sneezed. A well-meaning aide said, bless you. Bless me? Do you think I need blessings? I'm always blessed with my wealth. Take this emerald and save your blessings for someone who actually needs them. Determined to make his grand purchase, Leon's entourage next headed to Beijing. As he toured the Forbidden City, he announced, I'm here to buy this entire country. What's the asking price? Mr. Leon, China is a sovereign nation. You can't simply buy it. Sovereign nation. Everything has a price. Besides, do you think I'm poor? Yesterday, I bought a coffee that's worth more than your GDP for the next 10 years. Here. Take this ruby and stop wasting my time. However, his plans to buy Australia hit another snag when he encountered the infamous Australian wildlife. Arriving in Sydney, Leon immediately called for a meeting with the Australian Prime Minister. I'm here to buy this continent. What's the asking price? Perhaps you should see the entire continent before making such an offer, Mr. Leon. Leon agreed, confident as ever. Their first stop was a wildlife sanctuary. Leon marveled at the kangaroos and koalas. Mr. Leon, these are just the beginning. Let's continue our tour. S1. Adorable. I'll take a few of these for my garden. Deeper into the outback, they encountered a saltwater crocodile. Leon, momentarily taken aback, tried to keep his cool. They're not exactly friendly, Mr. Leon, and they're just one of many. S1. Impressive creature. Perhaps I could keep one as a pet. Further on, they stumbled upon a redback spider. Leon's eyes widened. One bite from that spider can be deadly. S1. That's quite small, but it looks rather dangerous. As they ventured further, a particularly large and menacing kangaroo crossed their path. The creature eyed them warily. S1. Deadly, you say? Perhaps Australia is more rustic than I anticipated. That thing looks like it could knock me out. Yes, they can be quite fierce. But don't worry, they usually keep to themselves unless provoked. All right, I think I've seen enough. This place is teeming with things that want to kill you. Here, take this diamond and consider this meeting over. Leon's grand plan to buy the moon brought him to a new chapter of his extravagant journey. Arriving in Washington, D.C., Leon arranged a meeting with NASA officials to discuss his outlandish proposition. As usual, his entrance was nothing short of spectacular. He arrived in a convoy of luxury vehicles, each more opulent than the last. In the conference room, the head of NASA, Dr. Elaine Richards, greeted him with a mix of curiosity and skepticism. Mr. Leon, welcome. I understand you have a rather unique proposal. Indeed. I wish to purchase the moon. What's the asking price? The moon isn't for sale, Mr. Leon. It's a celestial body, part of our solar system, and not something that can be owned. Not for sale? Everything has a price. I can buy anything. Here, take this diamond-encrusted pen and consider the moon mine. Mr. Leon, the moon is not just about ownership. It's a scientific resource and part of our heritage. You can't simply buy it. Scientific resource? I'm here to offer you more resources than you've ever seen. Think of the advancements you could make with my wealth. Now, what will it take to make this deal happen? Despite the absurdity of his request, Leon's sheer determination and wealth began to sway the conversation. 
The officials realized that while they couldn't sell the moon, they could certainly benefit from his investment in lunar exploration. As the negotiations continued, Leon's antics provided plenty of entertainment. At one point, a young intern sneezed. Bless me. Do you think I need blessings? I am always blessed with my wealth. Take this gold watch and remember, I don't need blessings. Eventually, a compromise was reached. Leon would fund a new lunar base and several exploratory missions, with the understanding that he would have naming rights and certain exclusive privileges. Satisfied with the arrangement, Leon left NASA headquarters feeling triumphant. He decided to tour Europe, considering it for his next extravagant purchase. In Paris, he met with government officials to discuss buying the Eiffel Tower. During the meeting, a French official asked, Mr. Leon, do you understand the cultural significance of the Eiffel Tower? Cultural significance? Do you think I'm ignorant? I can buy anything and everything and I know it's worth. Here, take this sapphire and never question my knowledge again. As they toured the city, Leon's eyes sparkled with ideas. He sneezed again and another well-meaning official said, Bless me again. Maybe I have allergy from being around broke millionaires. Do you think I need blessings? I am perpetually blessed with my wealth. Take this ruby and save your blessings for someone who actually needs them. Bless you. Despite his outrageous behavior, Leon's wealth and charisma began to win over the Parisians. They were intrigued by the idea of a billionaire alien investing in their city, even if his requests were outlandish. Eventually, Leon decided to expand his investments into the arts. He approached the Louvre with the intention of purchasing the Mona Lisa. The museum director, stunned, asked, Mr. Leon, the Mona Lisa is a priceless piece of art. You can't just buy it. Priceless? There's no such thing. Everything has a price. Here, take this diamond the size of your head and consider the painting mine. Realizing the potential benefits of Leon's involvement, the museum proposed a compromise. Leon would fund a new wing of the Louvre dedicated to intergalactic art and in return he could have a high-quality replica of the Mona Lisa for his collection. As Leon continued his grand tour, each city and country he visited found ways to accommodate his extravagant demands while benefiting from his seemingly limitless wealth. Leon's adventures were far from over. With each new destination he found ways to flaunt his wealth, make outrageous demands and leave a lasting impact. The galaxy watched in amusement and awe as the billionaire alien continued to turn the universe into his personal playground, one extravagant purchase at a time.